Lee YouTube, JB from Oz here. I was recently invited to go and have a look at a new range of desktop metal 3D printing machines. And here's some footage that I took while I was at the show, showcasing some of a range of 3D printed options, including this here, which is a 3D printed multicolor facsimile of somebody's hand. The previous items, which were mock-ups, again, 3D printed, really high res color. This kind of stuff has been available for a little while. Uh, here we've got a flexible material that um, allows you to see some of those capabilities as well. Um, this is a, probably a nylon flex and next up you can see the support material. This is how it would be printed to hold itself together prior to being uh, dispatched from the support to use. This item is really quite cute. Um, there's a hollow that joins this side through to the other side, something you wouldn't be able to make without 3D printing. Then we start to look at some of the desktop metal functions. Uh, this one here is a stainless piece that's been 3D printed direct down in the desk metal machine. Um, another dental implant again showing some really high resolution detail using laser sintering. This is a 3D print where it's uh, printed as one unit but still has the ability to act as a vent and a directional bubble and a on-off opening valve. Again, a metal part but really quite uh, Detailed print and quite lightweight, uh, manufactured as, as a 3D printed laser part. These guys, Objective 3D, are the guys that were holding the demonstration. This is a really fine lattice metal print, quite strong, really quite surprisingly strong and also light with that honeycomb shape. Over now to the desktop 3D, this piece here is the post-protest post-processed sintered metal part uh, once it has been through a washout and then a sintering process and uh, it's really quite a fine grain structure this is the part as it comes off the printer the white line is a ceramic separating layer and the sort of grey colour is a metal injection moulding powder combined with a number of waxes the first wax gets dissolved in a solvent bath and then the item gets placed into a um, into a, a sintering furnace and that uh, takes its time to sinter and then produces this really highly dense material. The shrinkage, everything like that is taken into consideration by the software which is pretty crazy. This part here is a engineering model that's been generated um, using computer modeling simulations and finite element analysis. Essentially, the computer is told that the two bosses need to connect together and it generates the support path between the two. So this is a part here that's again been printed, uh, pre-machined with all the holes. You would post-process if you needed a uh, machine dimension, but uh, this is a pretty good start point if you were to compare this to, say, a cast part that would then also have finishing. Pretty crazy. The 3D printing materials include some nylons and some carbon nylons. Um, this is an example of a flexible material being used in a clip-on utility. This. Uh, wing section shows you some of the detail that the selective laser sintering can come up with. Check out the uh, lattice in there. Don't know how else you would make that. You wouldn't cast it, that's for sure. Amazing. Here's another part that's been grown to suit a mechanical requirement. So there's quite an organic shape to it, and essentially that is by making sure that uh, the software builds out the parts required to connect the various load points, and the finished part is the result. 
a more traditionally modelled part, but again, really quite extreme. This is an example of some of the nylon prints. Check out the surface finish on that. It's crazy good. And again, polished up once it's been printed, it then can be post-processed and finished up however you want. And really quite a fine grain to hit. There's another look at this part here. You can see that void that's straight up the guts. You might be able to cast that, but you wouldn't do it as a nylon print. <laughs> and these uh, medical imaging models, again, really crazy how they can get these results. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you found some of this interesting. Um, I was pretty blown away by some of this stuff. Uh, can't wait to see where we are in another five years. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Because we certainly have some researchers doing things with molecular data. We also have some people doing stuff with um, medical. So having things that you can actually see through a shape into the internals, like volumetric data sets. Uh, I'm not sure where this no, company is. Yeah, the way you can do that, doing volumetric calculations.